Hello, everyone, and welcome hey. again to the 20th session of EU Business What? Talks. Most welcome. My name is Ante Milevoy, and our guest of honor today is Mr. Bruno Konstanz, Group and Marketing Innovation Director at Jeffco Group. Bruno, good day to you and most welcome. Hello, Ante. Thank you for having me. Hello, everyone. Bruno, you are headquartered, your company actually is based or headquartered in Paris. Are you talking with us from Paris this, this moment? Yes, I am based in the outskirts of Paris, um, to be very um, exact, in Puteaux, which is uh, three kilometers away from the Arc de Triomphe. Okay, so just out of curiosity, my first question is a very general one. What kind of weather do you have at the moment? <laughs> uh, it's uh, Parisian weather, let's put it this way. It's gray, wet, and the uh, temperature is around 12 degrees, so a kind of uh, slightly warmer November than usually. Okay, it sounds normal autumn time to me as well. Exactly, exactly. Okay. Bruno, before we go any further with your company, uh, I want to ask you some general questions. Uh, first of all, how is France doing these days, months, economic-wise? Are you feeling uh, GDP growth that European Union is having? Are you on good vibes? Well, uh, let me uh, uh, step back a little bit with 2020 and the COVID crisis as France was severely hit and we had uh, GDP going down by 8% uh, with regards to the uh, two lockdowns that we faced. And the economy of France is uh, strongly based on services. So, uh, of course, when you shut down all the shops and when you lock down the people, obviously, it's a very severe hit on the GDP. Uh, this year, however, uh, there has been a strong bounce back, stronger than expected by most of the economists, as uh, the IMF is forecasting for 2021 a growth that should be around 6.75%, which means that more or less France has caught up with the level of GDP it had before the pandemic, um, and that was not expected before the end of 2021 or early 2022, so we are slightly in advance. So economically speaking, the country is doing rather well. The unemployment is below the level of uh, unemployment before the crisis at 7.8 to 7.9% of the workforce, which for France is a rather reasonable result. Um, we should also state that um, the economy has been sustained and has been uh, heavily uh, supported by the government and by uh, helps. Uh, and subsidies from the government. So that's also the reason why the bonds back is so strong. Okay, great. To me, it sounds rather optimistic uh, today. I, we hope that it will be the same tomorrow uh, as well for all, for the sake of all of us. Let me put it this way. Bruno, this, this chat is called EU Business Talks. And one of the main pillars of EU as such is free movement of Uh, people, goods, services, as, as you know. And since you are also in this line of business, my obvious next question is how does European Union influences your business in general? I mean, I don't go too much deep into particularities. Yes, well, of course, the uh, European business is uh, consubstantial to our activity. And uh, the fact that we have one currency, that we have no borders anymore uh, since the uh, EU and before the EU, the European community has completely changed uh, our business and the way we work. Uh, if uh, I refer to uh, France, uh, more than 60% of our exchanges are with the EU members. Um, and so that gives the magnitude of or the importance of the EU for France. And for Jeffco, of course, um, we are right in the middle of all the logistic flows that cross Europe from east to west, from north to south, by all means, by ship, by plane, by train, by road. And uh, this is obviously um, a throttle or an accelerator to our development. So without the EU, I, I daren't consider where we would be, but we would definitely Uh, not uh, bring um, added value to the, the supply chain as we do today. It's been um, 
a fantastic accelerator. Very uh, nicely put, Bruno. Please, I, I interrupted you. You go ahead. No, no, no. I was just going to mention Brexit as well, because um, logistics is not only crossing the borders that do not exist anymore from a commercial standpoint, but it's also making sure that we comply with the rules when there are some external countries that are in our close neighborhood with regards to the UK. That's absolutely the case. And we make sure as well at Jeffco that we have all the tax uh, and uh, the, the trade services that uh, support our customers uh, go through uh, smoothly and make sure that the channel is closed as it used to be before Brexit. So, uh, you know, this is um, an, interesting, an interesting time where we not only have a free market that we address, but also uh, where we have the capabilities to export not only, by the way, in Europe, but also in Latin America, in China, or in the North, of, North America. Okay. Uh, before I read our invite, dear friends, let me put one another question to, to uh, Bruno, the last one in this, in this part. So, after Corona email and good morning, goodbye, one of the key business phrases, at least, is supply chain challenges. How do you see this phrase within the last year and a half or so? Oh, well, I would answer, we're going from crisis to crisis and um, crisis seems to be the new normal in a way, because uh, when you uh, step back, we've had COVID indeed, where we have supplied masks from China to Australia, for instance, more than 50 million, uh, where we have supplied medical device from uh, China as well to Central Europe, Czechos the Czech Republic and Slovakia. Um, we've um, then uh, faced some recovery to uh, face another crisis, which was, I don't know if you remember because crises are going along uh, every month, basically. That was the uh, Suez Canal crisis with- um, Of course, the of canal. course. So when was it, in springtime? It was in September, so we have to manage this as well and uh, make sure our customers receive their components or, or the, the parts that are usually shipped and make sure that um, uh, we manage to go through the ports with um, uh, hundreds of ships waiting to, to go through. Um, and, um, and now, uh, because we, we all, we, we, I could have um, used another word, it is semiconductors. I think mm. that the crisis we're in is semiconductors, which is paramount for obviously the automotive industry, where, as you know, we are leaders in terms of supply chain in Europe, but also electronic products, not only the automotive industry, but uh, consumer good uh, is starting to be hit as well. So that's the crisis we're in at the moment. Yes, indeed we are. And uh, let me, dear friends, dear Bruno, reread our invite just so we we go straight forward. Jeffco Group, which uh, Bruno is representing, has 70 years of long tradition and today's European leader in automotive logistics and the top 10 global partner in multimodal supply chain solution. The whole group employs 1100, more than 1100 people in 47 countries and reaches an annual turnover of 3.8 billion euro. Bruno, are you having your daughter companies in almost every EU state, I assume? Yes. And of we, course, we, wider. We do, yes. So we are 11,000 uh, in the world. Uh, we have uh, daughter companies across Europe, all over the place. And uh, across the world, we have 47 subsidiaries in the world. And we have 79 additional states where we are present with partners. Um, what we do is... Uh, as a world expert in supply chain, uh, we uh, design and implement door-to-door -door solutions dedicated to the supply chain of our customers. And uh, it includes supplying the production sites, but also distributing the warehouses and delivering finished products, whatever the products it can be vehicle, it can be spare parts, it can be any kind of finished goods. So uh, we, uh, we offer this integrated service, not only for automotive as a sector, but also for other areas such as consumer goods, electronics, healthcare and pharmaceuticals, uh, many other markets where we are strong and uh, heavily present. Uh, we have diversified very much in the past 10 years and uh, we've been around, yes, as you said, for more than 70 years now. 
Okay, since your uh, working title is not just marketing, but also innovation director, uh, to, to somebody who is not so familiar with innovation in logistics, can you can you enlighten us a little bit? What what is the biggest challenge in innovation part of your business? Well, there are quite a few. Um, number one, innovation is a culture at Jeffco, and uh, it can be something very small and very operational, which is more at the level of development, or it can be something more radical. Uh, from a, a market perspective, uh, a big chunk of the innovation relates to productivity and to automation. And we see it in all our warehouses where we've seen and we've witnessed in the past years more and more machines, robots, and uh, uh, in, in a way less and less human being. Um, and uh, the, the IT here has played a, a significant uh, role when you see how works um, um, a warehouse management system today and what it was 10 years ago or 15 years ago, it doesn't have much to do anymore. Um, it's the same. Uh, if I step back even further with regards to digitization, our industry has digitized very much and uh, it seems um, uh, something obvious and easy for every one of us when we receive a parcel to track the parcel, to trace it, to know where it's going to arrive, uh, sometimes at the minute. Uh, well, this revolution that occurred in a B2C world has also occurred in the B2B world, where we need more and more to provide to our customer in real time the information they expect uh, from um, um, a shipment perspective. So digitization is certainly one uh, strong area of innovation. Another one, which is uh, way beyond logistics, relates to um, the, uh, and that's uh, obviously in the news every day, um, it's the green, the green offer and everything we can do as uh, um, um, a company that uh, is employing and putting on roads uh, many, many trucks uh, to reduce the CO2 footprint. And uh, that's another part of the innovation we're working on at Jeffco, as we obviously want to uh, improve the carbon footprint uh, and contribute to uh, this task uh, from a logistics standpoint. Yeah, it sounds logical in a way, but also funny. I'm, I, Bruno, I just returned from uh, uh, an event in Copper, by the way, I, I couldn't have a luck to visit Port of Copper and your company there, but I'll do that uh, uh, very much soon. So the lady uh, uh, under the spotlight was saying, uh, yeah, we are talking about green growth, but everything what, what is growing, it's not necessarily green, you know? So we were laughing maybe, but uh, she had a point in a way. So this green thing, it's definitely... Uh, a challenge for for every sector basically globally uh there you go dear friends uh feel free to post your questions in the chat box for uh, uh bruno before i see the first or the second one i'll dare to ask you one more thing bruno since i was in copper you are part of the activities in port of copper and north adriatic route uh, I bet you are placed all over the main harbors globally. Yes, we are. We have 67 locations on the major ports in the world, and copper is one of them. Uh, may I um, add that we are strong in Slovenia as well, because you're our guest. So I would like to say a few words to uh, our Slovenian colleagues. We've been in Slovenia for more than 14 years now. We have more than 30 people, and we operate, of course, in copper but we also are present and strongly present in Croatia, which is uh, obviously uh, uh, on the other side of the border. So uh, our presence um, in Slovenia, in Europe, and across the major ports in the world is, is important indeed. Perfect. Martin is the first one. Hi, Martin. Uh, what are your biggest challenges now? It might sound a general question, Bruno, but we are always facing biggest challenges every day and every month and every year? Well, the biggest challenge, we touched a few words about it, is the semiconductor crisis, because we are a company that is operating uh, as um, a logistic leader in automotive, and all our customers, OEM customers, are 
uh, hit by this crisis. As you know, the markets are down in some countries by 20 to 30 percent. Um, it was the case. I um, I checked the uh, figures before um, uh, having our interview, and uh, the market in Europe is minus 30 percent in October. It's the same in France. Um, so that's that's a huge challenge, as it's going to last probably for the next uh, uh, six to nine months, from what uh, IHS is suggesting, before we go slightly or slowly back to normal. So that's the that's the major concern we face today is uh, trying to find and trying to supply the semiconductors to our customers uh, in a world where um, they are not available. And out of top three, if I'm not mistaken, the first two are in Taiwan, correct? And the third one in US, is it? Uh, my it's, recollection is correct. I, I would uh, think so, I confirm. And uh, you may know, and that brings us back to the EU, that uh, the uh, European Union is uh, working on setting up such factories and mega factories of semiconductor in Europe. But of course, uh, between the crisis and the setup and the birth of such factories, it takes time. So it will be for the next time and we will have to solve this crisis before it happens. Is this the fact, uh, Bruno, I'm not sure, but is this the fact that uh, Volkswagen is uh, putting their production down a little bit? I wouldn't comment with regards to Volkswagen, but what I can say is generally speaking, uh, and I won't quote the brand of the car companies I visited uh, a few weeks ago that were shut down due to the semiconductor crisis, not a car going out. Okay. The vast majority of friends here in the room are Bruno from uh, within Europe, but we have very uh, good and sincere friends also from elsewhere. Can you please maybe elaborate in a couple of sentences really what does it mean, uh, Africa for you, for your business, I mean, globally, maybe uh, Asia and also Latin America? Yes, uh, I will start by the latter. Latin America, we've been present for a few decades in Brazil and Argentina, mainly, and also Central America and Mexico. Um, it's a business where we are strong in inbound logistics, uh, especially in the automotive sector, but not only. Uh, and uh, we have a historic presence which is related to Gojo or PSA or now Stellantis, uh, as um, uh, when Stellantis uh, started in LATAM, we accompanied them there. Uh, with regards to Africa, we are strong, especially in Northern Africa, and uh, more specifically in Morocco. Uh, also, our uh, based uh, in most of the areas, uh, Tangier and around Tangier, where you have the factories, the car factories that have been set up, Renault, for instance, but also uh, Stellantis and a few others. And um, also with regards to the aeronautic sector, Morocco is um, uh, a strong uh, and growing country where we are present and we supply for uh, Safran, for instance, uh, parts of reactors, uh, that are partly produced in Morocco before they come uh, back to Europe. Uh, with regards to Asia, I would enlarge to Asia Pacific as we're not only present in Asia and especially in China, but we're also present in Australia and New Zealand. Uh, and uh, our activity there is diversified. Um, well, as we all know, um, uh, the, the importance of um, uh, Eastern Asia is such that um, uh, it's, it's a growing area and it's an area where we are strong and uh, where we have uh, great expectations in the future. Of course, this is not a new reality. That's just reality, what it is. Uh, Vivek is with us from India. Hi, Vivek. Good to see you once again. Uh, so uh, just-in-time delivery on shop floor was the norm in automotive manufacturing pre-pandemic days. To what extent has this changed now, Bruno? <laughs> um, I, I would say that it is uh, obviously evolving and uh, we've seen, uh, and not only be before, not only because of this pandemic, but also with all the crises that we faced before, because the pandemic is the last of many ones, uh, we've been more and more integrated to the supply chain, the inbound supply chain of automotive, 
uh, we have set up uh, some uh, working areas where we assemble sub, sub um, system of cars uh, just by the, the line, in fact. Uh, so in such a way, um, the supply chain has evolved. We don't only bring, as we used to, um, bits and pieces, but we assemble as well. And uh, we uh, make more and more refined um, uh, sub elements that are then included into the car. Okay. This, this is made possible thanks to the, the famous Jeff Box that the, the whole world knows because we have those, uh, uh, you know, system of boxes that are delivering the factories and then uh, in a cycle going back to uh, our um, uh, inbound partners and to feed the factories. Semiconductor, you mentioned also this lack of shipping container. It's, it's a global thing. Uh, are manufacturing having additional stocks now, Bruno? Well, um, the, the crisis is uh, multiple with regards to containers. You know, it's, um, it's the first time we experience uh, the economy overall going down by such GDP numbers and then uh, up again by the same kind of numbers. So this hiccup has had strong effect and impact on the market. And uh, you see the price of containers, which is uh, skyrocketing. It is. See the, the problems we have to find containers uh, from Asia to the rest of the world. It's, it's a real issue. And operationally speaking, our RNC people are working hard every day to make sure that we can supply our, 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 our customers, our partners with what they expect from us. So um, uh, yeah, I would say the answer is yes. Okay, we are uh, also skyrocketing in our chat box, Bruno, so we need to be really uh, to the point. Uh, Andres with us from Zurich, are you readjusting your forecast models to handle the demand forecasting, Bruno? Well, uh, we're in budget time, so uh, <laughs> yes, we are. Um, but uh, it's a very operational question, so I won't uh, go into the details here. I won't be able to answer uh, uh, in details. Okay. Alash is with us asking, is there any other supply crisis already seen in Horizon? Might be currently in small scale, but can heavily develop in the close future, Bruno. Are we in constant, constant uh, turnaround of crisis? That's a possibility. You see the, um, the inflation, you see uh, the raw material and uh, the way it evolves. And uh, you see also the, the weird movements on the market that sometimes relate to speculation from what we hear. So uh, it's a possibility that uh, semiconductor won't be the only crisis that we will face in the future. And we will have other tensions on raw material. Um, from what we hear and from what we know, uh, it's conjunctural, it's not structural, so that should ease in the course of 2022, uh, but we are prepared to this kind of, indeed, uh, additional crisis in, in other areas. You know, in, uh, for instance, we have some customers who are looking for some wood. Uh, wood is also something uh, which seems weird, but uh, that is uh, difficult to find in those days. Uh, the same with copper, um, so the same with aluminium. So um, this COVID uh, pandemic and the way the, the, the countries now are gaining uh, uh, strength is putting at risk um, a few raw material um, logistic chains. Okay, Paul is with us from Taiwan. Hi, Paul. Uh, he wonders if you have any sourcing agent in Taiwan if not, do you consider to collaborate with Taiwan company to source IT, industrial PC parts directly from okay. Taiwan or in yes, Taiwan? We have sourcing agent in Taiwan. Uh, however, uh, off record and after the call, we can have a discussion with Paul. Yes. Okay. Vladimir is with us also. Can you please tell us which country or countries have the biggest rise in construction business at the moment, Bruno? Hmm. I, I don't know, to be honest, to be frank. I won't be able to say uh, what country has the biggest rise in the world in construction business. 
Ah, uh, it's a it's a fair answer, Bruno. I know I the know. background of the person, so but it's a fair answer. Katsue is with us from Tokyo. Katsue, good evening to you. Good to see you. Do you mm -hmm. know Three Wall Packaging Company? Try wall. Try wall. Try wall. Okay. Mm. Thank you. No. Okay. Let's. There must be a question behind as well. But let's go forward. We will double yeah. check this with Katsue. Mm -hmm. Francis, with us. Do you think situation with lack of containers and transportation costs will return back to normal level before crisis soon? The, um, is I, it a one million question? Yes, I was <laughs> question by question. When is soon? Uh, the impact that we face and the way the world goes with all we know as well with regards to CO2 emission and to green and to uh, what needs to be done from um, a sea shipment standpoint means that uh, the, the world is evolving. And so uh, I am not an expert in RNC, but definitely uh, the back to normal will be a different normal and whenever. So expect the unexpected or be prepared for everything, I guess. Martin is with us from France. Hi, Martin. Good to see you once again. Bruno, you are operating in North Africa, as you said. Uh, are you considering expanding your business in Sub-Saharan Africa one day? Are you, are you already there, present? You know, we have, uh, we have partners in this area. So uh, we are not uh, based as uh, subsidiaries in uh, Sub-Saharan Africa, not very much. Uh, but we also face a strong competition in this area. So uh, we uh, need to take uh, it step by step. And uh, uh, today, the market in uh, Sub-Saharan Africa is already a very competitive market. So that would be my answer. And it's a good answer. If I translate mm -hmm. it for you, Martin, he didn't say no. He didn't say yes. He opened the door <laughs> open. Yeah. Uh, it's 29 minutes past the hour, dear friends. We came to this uh, timing very soon, which means that our uh, common guest, Bruno, was to the point. And Bruno, I wish to thank you really for, for uh, being with us uh, today. Before we let you go i have two more things first of all when you are not working checking emails and all the, the relation related stuff uh, with your job what is your private life about bruno oh well i have one passion in life which is skiing so when i'm not working when the snow is there and when i can escape to the alps i ski uh, and of course, uh, as most people on earth, I have a family life, I have uh, children, and I'm taking care of them as much as I can and provide all the logistics that they need. Perfect. One, one sub question more. When you are skiing, Bruno, are you putting your cell off? Is that possible? <laughs> yes. Oh, he said yes, so it's possible. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, well, really nice, and I wish to thank you once again, Bruno, and I leave the final 15 seconds or so to address our friends here in the room to you. Bruno? Thank you very much. It was really a pleasure uh, being with you. Uh, it's gone very, very fast, this half an hour, and I'm looking forward to the next session. Perfect. Uh, thank you, Bruno. And dear friends, I will be sending you a follow-up email uh, very soon, which will be also the uh, basic contact data of Bruno, and you can do your own follow-up with him or his colleagues uh, in, in, in Copper or elsewhere, for sure. I wish to thank you for being with us today, you all. And my last thing to mention is that next week, this time, we will be talking to Thomas Oman from Sweden. Until that time, I wish you all the best and I put my kisses back to you all. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.